So I, again, uh, very good morning to everybody, and um, I welcome you to our fourth week of entrepreneurship. Um, I would like to thank you very much for your contribution thus far, and also uh, my thanks to the online community for all the interactions and the continuous brain rewiring that's taking place. So uh, today, we are talking about building a team, building a dream team. And I would like to start with an activity. So maybe on your table, I think you could be in groups of fours or three. So you could just maybe turn and talk to the, the group behind you. Not yet, let me just explain. I would like you to form your dream team, soccer or football dream team. So if, imagine if you are forming a new club and you have all the money that you want. Now, you, Chris, you have issue? You don't watch football? Okay, so let's say if I ask you, you are not interested in football at all, but I say build me a great soccer team that will be the best team in Asia or in the world. You will do something, right? So what, what will you do? So I would like you to work in groups of three to four for maybe five minutes. Give me a list. Now you guys have the internet. You can go and search whoever you would like to have. So do you know how many players in a football team? Yes, 11. 11, okay, great. So, so at least you know that, yeah. Okay, and, and, and there is a guy at the back, the only one, there is a goalkeeper. So, okay, so I think you know enough. Go ahead, yes. Form your dream football or soccer team? Um, okay, so if I give you the money, you could buy them now. So, so no retired players and no dead players, please. Yeah, 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 no dead players, yes, thank you. So we just, yeah, yeah. And, and, and maybe we'll be asking one group to come front and, and, uh, and present. Yes, Nick? Uh, you, is that your choice? So we'll, we'll, we'll be we'll, we'll, we'll putting 11 strikers will make the best team. Okay, so you see the trick now, right? Just go ahead. Yeah. Do you think you are okay? Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah. You have only five minutes. This is supposed to be. Yeah. So, so since sorry, since uh, Chris said he doesn't watch football, he's not interested in it. So I would like your maybe group to present, and maybe for him to present. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I, I hope this will create more interest now. In, yeah. I was thinking of presenting. Well, well you, you, you could do a, um, a teamwork, so you go together. Okay, okay. So, so, so you're planning to volunteer. Maybe you bring, you bring him as your wingman. <laughs> yeah. Are you guys done? Yeah. Three more, yes. Yeah. Done? Uh, almost. Almost, okay, okay. So wh why don't you guys join these two? We're building a football team. Yeah, I'm doing it. No, because you are not, you're doing it here. Why are you doing? Here. You don't seem to be, so why don't you join them there and see, do you, do you like football? Not really. Yeah, never mind. So, so if you don't like football and someone come and say, okay, I give you a million dollar, build me the dream team. And I have, I give you a buy, so who you'll buy? Yeah, so just, yeah. okay, two more minutes, two more minutes, you're done, okay, good, this group is done, two more minutes, we'll have to stop. Okay, stop working, stop working, stop working, thank you. So, uh, who would like to present their 
Dream lineup. Dream team lineup. Who would like to present? This is a question, and I want volunteer. Which group would like to volunteer to present? Raise your hand if you are too shy to say anything. Nick, can you hear me? I'm saying who will volunteer to present? So I see you're writing. Does that indicate that you are volunteering to present? You guess so. OK. Stay with this group, please. So yes, go ahead. Present your team to us. So uh, hello. Uh, and shall I, uh, in, shall I introduce my group? Uh, if you would like to, go okay. ahead, yes, please. Uh, yeah, so our group, uh, we have uh, chosen our dream soccer team. Uh, okay, our group consists of me and Nikhil, uh, Christopher, uh, Pang, uh, Mingta, Kashminder, and uh, Yvonne. Yeah. So, um, Picking a dream soccer team is not just about picking the best players and you know um, all the Messi's and Ronaldo's of the world. It's about I, I, we I, we feel it's about team chemistry, and so we 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 pick our team based on chemistry and obviously a skill. So uh, let's start with the strikers. Uh, yeah, so uh, we can't deny that Messi is probably the best football player in the planet. So uh, we had just have to in include him, and also his attitude off, uh, off and on the pitch. He he is a, very much a team player. So we pick Messi, and then there's the two uh, Manchester United players, uh, Bampersi and Rooney. Well, uh, they they both won the, the league this week, just this week, yeah. And so, uh, and obviously their, their team chemistry is very important for them winning the league. So yeah. Uh, so I think I shall let you this. So, so Chris, are you just presenting one by one, or are you, are you telling us why did you pick, for example, uh, Zavi? Oh, right. Is that Zavi? Yeah. Zavi. Okay. Um, I, no. no, no, no. I think I think I would like Chris because he's the one who doesn't watch football. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what, what was what based on what you picked these three out of the sea of players out there? Okay, um, basically because in our team of six, there's three of us who does not watch football uh, at all and three of them who actually are kind of like fans. So uh, what we were concerned of was um, how well the team would perform together because uh, if we pick all the best players only, uh, that might kind of create a conflict in the team itself. So what we were looking for is how well um, they complement each other. Right. So how we worked was uh, we got the kind of like in input from the three football fans on who has the skill as well as we constantly ask them as how what their personality are like like right. how well do they work with others are they you know selfish right. and they kind of like want to okay. be the hero of the team and that's really how we actually pick sure. the team so you are telling me that you looked at two things yes. the skill mm -hmm. and also the personality yes okay very good so uh would you like quickly just to take us through uh, your favorite player here? Um, <laughs> I guess my favorite player would be Rooney. <laughs> okay, and that's be because? Uh, that's because he's the only one that I know. <laughs> right, okay, 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 great. Any questions to them? Okay, no. Great. Give them a big hand. Okay. So uh, Asad is going to present uh, their dream team. Uh, this is the, the dream team that I have put together if I were to give a chance to select uh, 11 players. I have uh, my goalkeeper as Iker Casillas. I have Sergio Ramos on right back. Uh, Thiago Silva and Hummels will uh, take care of the central defense. Uh, left back would be Philip Lam. My center midfielders would be Xabi Alonso and Xavi. Uh, right winger is Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, this is the attacking midfield. I have uh, Lionel Messi. On the left, I have Gareth Bale, and my attacker would be Radamel Falcao. So, for me, if I, if I were given a chance, this is the best possible eleven I could have picked. And, and, and you, you pick them based, can you please stay with us? And you pick them based on? 
uh, their skill and how good they are at their particular positions. Right, so the skill and how is this skill specifically suitable yes, to that position? To that position yeah. yes. So if you put Messi as a goalkeeper, no, w no, maybe no. We okay. lose 10-0 maybe, <coughs> right. something like that. Okay, so now, now I would like everyone to just join again with whatever knowledge you have. If, I, I know some of the players are in both teams, but let's imagine we could clone the player. If these two teams played, who think Team Nikhil would, would win or Team Asad would win? So who votes for this team? Raise your hand. <laughs> apart from the team itself. Okay, apart from the team itself. So you think one, two, one, two, and that's it. Two people will think this team would win. Okay, who thinks that Team Assad would win? Apart from Assad's te team, please. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Are we recording that? Please, can you, can you capture the, uh, yeah, the hands before they put it down? Yeah, okay, wonderful. Now, I would like one of those people who raised the hands to please tell us why do you think Team Asset is going to win? Please. Since, since you are the athlete among us, and you raise your hand anyway, he's, uh, he's a national uh, <laughs> player in cricket. Yes. 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 Good. Yeah. Maybe then you'd like to stand up as well? Yes. And speak loudly? Um, okay, um, well, I, I am analyzing based on the, uh, on the players in the team. As you can see, uh, Nikhil's team has um, a lot of stars actually in one team, right? Um, I've been watching football for a really long time. Um, when there are too many stars on one team, everyone wants to, to show what they can do, right? So most probably the, the team chemistry is not there. That's what I feel. And uh, in Asa's team, we have players from... Uh, different countries, different clubs, and I can see um, maybe one or two of them are uh, self-players, but the rest of them actually play as a team. Right. So that's what I feel. So, so you are referring be besides the skill yep. and the attitude and the suitability for the position, you thought the diversity of the team is also an important factor? Yes, definitely. Okay. It's a team game, it's not a... It's not a, an individual exactly game. Exactly yeah. right. It's, it's a team game. Thank you very much. Thanks You're a welcome. lot. Okay. Thanks. So, uh, yeah, I thank you very much for the uh, two teams who volunteered. So let's, 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 let's carry on. So that was a, that was a very uh, useful activity, I, uh, I hope. I hope you enjoyed it as well. Now, the question to ask is, why do we need a team in the first place? Not only for football, but in general, your, your work is happening in teams. You do your projects in teams. When, um, when you work later, when you join a company, most likely you'll be working within a team. The company itself, in a way, is a team. So why do you think we need a team? To improve the quality of the, our product. Improve the quality of yeah. our product. So you are, you are telling me that one individual won't be able actually to deliver a good quality on his or her own. Yes, but uh, with uh, uh, more percent, we can move a better quality. Of right, the so with more people, we can, we can have better quality. Yes, wonderful. Thank you very much. Yes, please. Uh, different ideas from each member has uh, different ideas. So, so different people will give different ideas. So this will enrich the discussion. Every person is expert in, in, in their field, respective field. Wonderful. So, so if you get people from different fields, you will have different expertise. Maybe you would not find them in one individual. There's no way that one individual knows more than you know, everybody else. Anyone else would like to say something? Yes, Chris. <clears throat> uh, I guess when you have a team, you have uh, many different individuals with different personalities as well as different strengths and weaknesses. So yes. by having different strengths and weaknesses, you kind of complement uh, each other. So that makes the team uh, have more strengths and less weaknesses. Wonderful. Kind of like cancels Wonderful. Strengths. Great. So, so what, you are, what you are saying is, if, if I have 
uh, a weakness. And all of us are full of weaknesses. Maybe to try to fix all our weaknesses is, is a very difficult job. But instead of trying to do this, maybe the best strategy is to bring people who will complement that. That, that. that was very good. Th I, I really thank you very much for the contribution. So, so we, we need a team to deliver the value proposition. Whether it's a product or a service, we need often a team to deliver it. So it could be as simple as having a pizza. There's no way one individual could bake it, sell it, deliver it. It's, it's impossible. You will need people. And, and the team sometimes could be different sub-teams, different companies coming together. We also need to amplify our strengths. So sometimes, if I am strong, and, there is, and I, I could carry weight, and there's some other person who could carry more weight with me, although this is a strength of mine, but having more people to carry the weight will make it even better and, 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 and stronger. And again, <clears throat> to mitigate the weaknesses and shortcomings as uh, Chris has rightly said. So uh, that was very good. Now let me show you this picture. This is actually the uh, Taylor's racing team. So over the weekend, we were, they were racing. I was with them, just enjoying them racing. So, so if you look, uh, the, the, we um, actually managed to grab the third position. So that was, was quite good. And um, there are plenty of them. Now, can you, can you identify certain people in the team who, who have a certain role? Can you identify, I don't know, who is the manager or who is the... You're the manager. I'm the manager. Okay. Oh, okay, among the students. I'm actually just the supervisor, to be very honest with you. I don't know how did they do it. But I just stand there, pretend to know, and support them. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. These are my two kids, by the way. Yeah. So, so, so you, maybe you could tell that this guy is the driver from, from the uh, yeah, suit that he's uh, putting on. Uh, some people are just supporters. Actually, this lady is from, not from engineering. Yeah, she's from, from business school. But uh, she likes the team, and she follows them everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so, so the, uh, the team leader is this student. His name is Sunny. And he, he actually never drives, but he's, his role is very important for the team. Now, the reason why I put this picture, because often when you see the product, you may see the people who are directly related to it. And I think if we see uh, a racing car, the, the first person to be associated with that would be the driver. But the driver is, is the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot of teamwork behind. So what we are doing here as entrepreneurs is if I were to build a team, how will I architecture the team so that I have my dream team? Whether it's in football, in racing, or in delivering the value proposition that my project is all about in whatever way. So as usual, I, I, I'm trying to give you tools. So I, I'm trying to demystify, why, how did you choose this team? So everyone talks about the chemistry. So how do I know the chemistry? How do, how do, I, how do I measure that? How do I uh, put people and teams and things together so that things can happen? So I, I'll share with you um, a matrix. And this is really related to, to our uh, racing team. But as we move on, you will see that it actually can be applicable anywhere. Now, when we talked about why you picked team, you talked about skills, and you also talked about attitudes and feelings. Some of you called it how you work with people. Some of you called it the chemistry. But this is literally is the attitudes and the, and, the, and the feelings. Now, there is a part that didn't really come very strongly in, in our discussion. I'm not very sure why, but maybe because it's taken for granted, which is the knowledge. 
So, so no one said, I picked these people because they, are, they know uh, about football, they know about the um, <clears throat> rules of, of the game. Because I think you, you, you expected that this is taken for granted. But if you think about it, um, an offside, is, you know, if you are not a football fan, it's quite difficult actually to explain. You, 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 you try to explain it to someone who has not watched football before. He see that the, the striker is running with the ball, he's facing the goalkeeper, and the thing is in. The, the ball is in the goal. So why it has been flagged? Oh, it's because it's an offside. So what's an offside? You, so, so that's just one part of the rules, which, is, which, which could be quite difficult to be explained, so you will, need, you will need the knowledge. And there are other attributes. So I will, I, will, I will try to explain these in a way that hopefully you will remember it. Knowledge is what is here. So the things that you know, the thing that you are having them up there, your knowledge of mathematics, your knowledge of the legal framework of doing business in Malaysia, for example, your knowledge about the rules of football. So people need knowledge to do their job. Now, besides the knowledge, we have, and, and this is called the cognitive domain. So cognitive is related to thinking, and that's anything that's related to knowledge is called, it's in the cognitive domain, and it's here. Now, when it comes to skills, we are talking about your hands, your legs, your, your, your muscles. How do you do a certain thing? So for example, I know that uh, um, uh, the, the aim of a, uh, a golf player is to hit the golf ball with the club. But not necessarily if I try to do it, I would even maybe won't drive the ball that far if to hit it at, at all. So this is the skill, or this is called the psychomotor do domain. So I use the term hand. So head for knowledge, hand for the skills, whether they are driving skills, or hitting the ball, or kicking the ball, or, or boxing, or running. And there are the attitudes or the feelings. And this is called the affective domain. So this is really the heart. So the head, the hand, the heart, the three edge. And, and, and there are some other attributes that, um, you, you know, for example, for you to be um, uh, a driver, sometimes the weight is an important thing. So you need to be of a certain weight or below a certain weight for you to become um, a driver, or, you, or normally basketball players are quite tall. Uh, those who do swimming, that, so these are attributes. Maybe uh, you, could, you could influence them, but w once you have you have them. Also in this last column, I put things like certificates. So for example, sometimes you do have knowledge in accounting. So you are a very knowledgeable person in accounting. You have been doing accountancy for a very long time. So you know your, your material, but you are not a certified accountant. And because you are not certified, then legally you won't be able to do a certain part of the job. So what I'm trying to do here is to provide you with these four domains, which are the knowledge, the skills, the hand, and also the effective, which is about to deal with the, the feeling and um, uh, the ability to work with people and things like that, and also the other, the other attributes that uh, you need. And then, when you look at your value proposition, you think of what kind of functions. You know, we, we talked about business activities in the ecosystem. We talked about if you, have, if you are running a pizza, business, you need someone to bake, you need someone to you know, mix, bake, sell, deliver. So these are business functions. So what kind of, or, or business activities, what kind of functions you, are, you need? And for each function, what kind of skills or capabilities, in which domain they are? And then you will start 
writing them. So for example, this is just, just an example. It could be not complete. For a driver, uh, I don't know whether they need specific knowledge about the car. I actually drive the car with, without, maybe, or most of us drive the car without may, maybe knowing how uh, the engine works and how the electronics in it work. You don't really need that kind of knowledge to drive the car. But you need maybe a different knowledge if you are driving in, in, in Malaysia, so we drive on the left side of the road, and um, there are certain rules could be different from uh, if you drive in, let's say, in the Middle East. Yeah. So, so this, this, is, this is maybe a knowledge that you need to be aware of before you start driving in a different country. Uh, the skills, uh, how do you handle the steering, how do you change the gear if you are uh, driving in a manual car, is really a skill that you need to repeat it a number of times until you are comfortable with it. There are, you know, attitudes and feelings. I, I didn't put anything here, but I'm sure there are some, um, some skills in the effective domain that the driver need, I don't know, need to be patient, need to be um, having the initiative. These are the things that you would like to see. Some other attributes, maybe you want the driver to be lightweight, and it's a requirement that the students to be put in the driver's seat to have a driver's license. So this is a requirement. Now we have some of the students who, who are yet to have their driver's license. Even if they are able to drive the car, they are not allowed to be in the race. So these are the, the attributes. If I were to get a driver, there's no way, no matter how, if you don't have a, a driver's license, it's illegal to put you in the race. It will disqualify us. Now, we, when you talk about the team manager, his knowledge or her knowledge about that race specific requirements is really a key. What are the things that are allowed in this race? What are the things that are not? So people keep on referring to, to him and, and, uh, or, or, or her. Even if he or she is not the best person to drive the car or not even the best person to repair the car, but things like empathy, being able to put him or herself in the position of the team members comes extremely uh, important. We didn't need him or her to have any license or any specific height or body weight, so we didn't maybe put anything here. Those that we call the mechanic, these are the people who will really need to be able to troubleshoot things in a split second. You know, like before you start the race, for whatever reason, your car is not starting. What will you do? So you want these to be people with, with, with a presence of mind. They need to actually know how the engine works inside out so they know where to go, what to measure, and, 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 and things like that. So, so if I am thinking of my ecosystem and thinking of my specifically va the value proposition, linking it to the, to the business activities, what are the functions needed and the skills needed for, and attributes needed for each function, thinking of them from a knowledge, a skill, an effective and attribute kind of way, this will help you write your job ad. So if you say, I want a driver, you won't say, I want a good driver because everyone think that he or she is a good driver. But if you say, I want a driver with a driver's license to drive a trailer, I think this is going to exclude everyone in this room straight away. So, so this is how, how you, you, so when you think about it, you don't just say, I need a driver. No, you have to, so this is from maybe the attribute or the, the licensing point of view, which is the last one. But also, if this driver is a person that's going to work with people, um, then maybe you start to say, from the attitude and, and, and feelings point of view, we want him or her to be uh, committed, always on time, and, and, and things like that. And then you go to the skills and the uh, knowledge part of you. So if, if, if this is a person that drives in a number of countries, you know, he or she maybe takes goods from here to, to, to Thailand, and then you will suddenly need knowledge in maybe the traffic 
rules and regulations in this country and maybe in another country. So this is a way to help us pick the, or, or, or write our, the, the specifications of the members of our uh, dream team. And, and the collection of the skills, attitudes, attributes, and knowledge that everyone will bring in will lead to what we call core competencies, or sometimes a core competency. So the skills, the capabilities of everyone in the team, when put together and under good leadership, what's going to happen? How do I see, let's say, Assets team or Manchester United team, what is their core competency as a team, not as individuals, what are they good at? So the core competency is, as I said, the thing that the team or the company is good at, it has to be useful to the customer, that's the key. So for this to be a core competency, it has to be something that the customer appreciates. The customer finds it useful and willing to pay for it. And it has to be difficult to imitate. So if everyone else has the same competency, if it's every other team, they also have the same competency, this is not a core competency. So for example, every team has 11 players. You cannot say our core competency is that we have 11 players, because this is everyone else has it. Or if they want, they could just imitate it. They could just copy it. So this is, for this to be a core competency, it needs to be a bit difficult to, um, to, imi to imitate. And it has to be deployable in a wide range of activities. So if I say, for example, a core competency of Taylor's University is the MOOC. First, is this useful for you? Is this useful for you uh, as, uh, as customers? We have to think about that, that's number one. Number two, is this difficult to imitate? Or anyone would like to have a MOOC, they just can have one like that. Now, for us to say that this is a core competency, how many MOOCs should we have? Only one? We, we should have a number of them. And it has to be, maybe every school has few. Then we know that this is, this is a place where students will be working with the on-campus, online students, and they are working together and adding value and things like that. So this is the, the concept of a core competency that I would like you to keep in mind, which is, in a way, the, the skills and the capabilities of a company. So when you talk about company A or university B, or product C, you know, what, what makes it different? Which is the collection of the skills and capabilities of the people in that um, company. So I'll talk a little bit about the core competency after this. You know, if you, if you think about it from, from a linguistic point of view, a core is the most important or the most central part of, of anything. A competency is, is a skill is an ability, is a capability. So a core competency then is an ability or a skill that is extremely important or central for the identity of the team and the ability of the team to deliver its value proposition to its customers. And it's, it's a result of what we put in. So all the skills that we are having the techniques, the cultures, the, the processes that we build in, all when they are put together, they are going to result in the core competency of a team. And hopefully, at the end of it, it will provide a competitive advantage and hopefully a sustainable competitive advantage for our business. So if you think about it, it should be something that's a bit difficult to imitate, or if it's very difficult to imitate, that's even, 
even better. So that's how you build the, the, the core competency that is connected to the value proposition. So you have a value proposition that you want to give or deliver to your customers. Then you think of what core competency that you need to have so that you can deliver that value proposition and what kind of team you will need to build with what skills, capabilities, and attributes that team will be having so that you can deliver the value proposition through the core competency of your team. So it's, it's, it's unique to a company and it is required from its founders. So if you are the founding team for your car company, what kind of skill that you bring to the table? And also, how do you, if you feel after the analysis that you are missing certain component, then you go out there and put, I've, I've seen some of you, and which is very good, and I even issued some of you some badges for the initiative that you are looking for online partners to join you. But I hope after this, today's lecture, you will, you will know wh who is the right person to look for. So it's not any participant from the online community, but there are people with that kind of knowledge, with that kind of attitudes and also skills, and maybe other attributes if necessary. So I just would like to recap. You remember the entrepreneurial uh, ecosystem and we talked about the value proposition, which is a key thing that needs to be delivered to the customer. And today we introduce the, co the concept of a core competency and how is this linked or connected to our, um, the, the skills that we, every team member or every team function uh, brings along. So if I were to think of a company, so let's say it's Apple. What do you think Apple's core competency is? And, and, and you need to use the mic, so if you want, just raise your hand and the mic will come to you. I think I said wanted to say something, right? Yeah, just, just say it, thanks. I think touch screen, the, the touch screen. So their core competency is touch screen. Okay, anyone else who thinks touch screen is a, yeah, or, or any other core competency? Yeah, this is discussion, just, just shoot. Uh, zooming in the screen, using the two finger to zoom. To zooming, yeah. okay. We call this a pinch, right? So the, uh, the uh, mic, what, what do you call this feature? Pin pinch feature. Pinch tool. Mm. One more? I think there. Yeah, just say. So, so what is a core competency for, for Apple uh, that's related to the value proposition they're delivering to the customer? The apps. The apps. Yeah. It, say, say a bit more. Sorry? Can you say a little bit more? Uh, uh, do you mean iTunes? Do you mean the App Store yeah, or the app themselves? Uh, iCloud. iCloud. I? Cloud. I cloud. Mm, I cloud. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Let's, let's just stop here. Do you think that the touch screen is, okay, let, by show of hands, who thinks that the touch screen is a core co competency? Show of hands. Okay. Who thinks that the touch screen is not 
a core competency. I said you need to look. They don't think it's a. I'm not an Apple user. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. It, it, it's actually for the sake of the sake of discussion. So, what, what about the pinch tool? Who thinks it's a, a core competency? Raise your hand. Two. Okay. Who think it's not a core competency? Okay. You look at them; they are afraid already. Okay. What about the iCloud as a core competency? No? One. iCloud is not a core competency. Okay. Okay, good. So I, I've noticed that most of you actually don't think that this is a core competency. But anyone else would like to try and tell us what do you think a core competency is for Apple? Okay, so please pay attention. Um, uh, yeah, I think it's the ability to create a uh, this complete user experience that's both aesthetically pleasing and uh, you know basically their, the way they lock in their customers is their core competency. Right. I think. So, so Mike is saying that their ability to create a customer experience that is amazing, and they are, they, you've said something else, and that's it. Actually, if you, this is, this, is, this is very true. They say we have attractive design and it's easy to use product. That's the core competency. The, the touch screen, was it invented by Apple? No. The touch screen technology was there. They popularized it. The touch screen, I think even on the AT some of the ATM machines, I think was there even before the iPhone. So, so the, the touch screen is a technology that they've used. And they, because this is a core competency, they will continue using maybe some other technologies that are being developed by research teams in universities and, and, and other places. So its ability is to make systems that are attractive, their design is attractive, looks simple, and it's, generally speaking, easy to use. Now, let's look at another company. What's Dell's core competency? Yes, please. Yeah, customer service. Can you say a bit? Yeah, customer service. Customer service. So for Dell, it's customer service. What else? Yes, there's a hand there. Yeah. After sales service. After sales service. So customer service before and after sale. OK, what else? Who uses Dell here? So Nick, you want to say something about Dell? How did you purchase it? How did you choose it? Uh, yeah, I purchased it on online. OK. Yeah. And yeah, I, like, as I said, the customer service was very good because it, it, it came in, like, in a, few, a week later. OK, let, let me help you. Mm -hmm. So you go there. You, you know you go to an Apple store, online or offline. Can you customize the Mac Pro? Yeah. Yeah. Can, the, the Mac? Yeah, that's right. Is it to the same level that you customize the Dell? Uh, well, you can customize uh, the Dell, but I'm not, because I, I, I've never went to the Mac store myself, so I'm not too sure how, how, okay. how good is it. My, Mike is the expert, and <laughs> yeah. so do they, do they, can you customize? Uh, uh, not, not to the level of Dell. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so and, and did, Apple say, you can customize, or this is a key feature, that you can customize your, your, uh, your uh, Apple product. Is this something that they're shouting about? No, they're not. No. So, so you, the, the, phone, the iPhone, you have the 16 gig, the 32 gig, and that's it. 
the 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 varieties in their product are very very limited and that's they say we make attractive systems and we make them easy to use that's our 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 core competency now for dell the core competency is the custom made and also the direct from manufacturer kind of uh, business model that um, supposed to make things cheaper okay so so you could see how if you were in Apple do you think this will knowing the core competency that you have which is something um, speaks maybe to your customer segment of the market through the value proposition that you are providing do you think this will affect the way you will build your team? Yes. Okay. So this is this is an important uh, this is an important uh, fact that the whether it's the team that will affect the core competency or you have a core competency in mind and build a team it actually goes in both ways because often the uh, companies start with one or two founders and these people do believe in, 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 in something that will be translated into the beginning of the core competencies and the value proposition to the customer and then the founders identify the gaps that they have and then they start attracting both employees people to work for them and also partners if they are um, not planning to employ the person for full time and then slowly the team will form and have its own um, its own identity um, the other thing that I'd like to talk about is the organization chart Have you seen an organization chart? Okay, good. So an organization chart is a, a, a chart that shows the structure of the business or the team. So for example, if our team has a leader, then we need to know who the leader is and what are the functions of the leader. So <clears throat> I said in your team, who would be the captain? Oh, okay. And in your team, who would be the captain? Uh, Was that? Right. This is very interesting because you mentioned that Messi is the best player on the planet. <laughs> right? Yeah. And, uh, but none of you have picked him to be the captain. There is a reason, I believe, for this. So in an organization chart, someone needs to be the team leader. And there is a reason for that. Because for decision making processes, for um, uh, accountability and responsibility, and that's often what, you know, one of the points that all the organization chart will have. So they will have maybe a leader. And then we will see, based on the different uh, business activities and functions, we will be having variety of departments or, or, or other you know, boxes in our uh, organization chart. The organization chart is also extremely important to, especially in a company and as the company gets bigger, is extremely important in um, telling you the relationship between different departments. So, for example, um, in a university, you have schools. So the schools are led by deans. The deans report to the deputy vice chancellor. Now, if dean A wants something from dean B, um, dean A can talk to dean B. That's, that's, that's fine. But if the thing requires um, uh, usage of resources, um, something of a bigger uh, kind of impact on Dean B. So maybe the Dean A will go to the superior of both of them and that superior will 
instruct the other dean to cooperate. So it, it tells you the line of reporting and how things can be, can be done in, in a certain uh, place. And it helps in decision making. So for example, uh, I have people in our school report to me. And I, I could pick something as simple as if they apply for leave, who will approve the leave? I don't think if I'm Dean A, Dean B can approve the leave for my staff because maybe I have another idea or another opinion about whether the, these people should be away on that specific day or not. So the organization chart makes these things um, organized and easy to, uh, to deal with. Now there are a few types of organization chart. This kind of type is called the hierarchy type. So you know you have the head of that specific business unit here and there are people reporting to him or her and underneath these people there are other people and sometimes you have another few, uh, few layers. So what happens for a person who is here maybe to reach here sometimes is a bit difficult. So this is, this is one way to do it. There is another way which is called the matrix kind of uh, organization chart. So let's say you have the president or the head of the unit and there are some managers and you also have people like doing design, HR, planning, and you have a number of projects running. So the project heads report to the president. These guys also report through their manager to the president, but they are supposed to support project A, project B, project C. So these functions, business functions, although they do not report directly to the project manager A, they are supposed to support him or her. So this is called the matrix kind of um, uh, organization chart. So this is one way of, of differentiating between organization chart. Any question about the organization chart? So uh, yes, please, there's a question there. Thank you. Between the, those, two chart, uh, those two chart, which one is normally used often? OK. So the question is, between these two charts, which one is used more often? Anyone would like to attempt to answer? I think I said wants to answer. Just uh, oh, there, 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 is there? Is there cheek? Yeah. I think the hierarchy. So asset thinks is the hierarchy. Um, Anyone else thinks otherwise? Chris wants to answer. Um, I guess it depends on the company itself. Uh, more larger companies would probably go with the matrix one because it's easier to manage uh, across the levels. Uh, Herika will probably be in smaller companies or organizations. So okay. Let me, let me teach you a trick. Whenever you don't know the answer, just say it depends. Okay? So it's, it's exactly right. It really depends. So it depends on the nature of business and it depends on the, uh, the size of, of, of the company. Now, the question was really which one is more in use? And I, I think if you are talking about, for example, the army, this is extremely important. So you have the general, the officers, the colonels, the lieutenants, and then you, so it's, there's a very well-structured uh, hierarchy of, of responsibility. But now, and um, in, in this dynamic business environment, Often people move on, and if, especially if it's, if it's a big kind of operation, they are, as Chris said, people move towards this. So for example, <clears throat> look at, I'll pick on, 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 on my university. Um, in the School of Engineering, there are some academic kind of services which are run pretty much in this way. And I'm going to share maybe our organization chart. So I have, 
under me there are some deputy deans, and under the deputy deans there are program directors. So it's, it's pretty much in that way because this is an academic kind of thing. We want to really uh, uh, control it, make sure that we get the accreditation, the quality is assured, and things like that. But at the same time, we have some other services like marketing, like the HR, uh, the student services, these people don't report to me because if they were to report to me, then every school will need an HR service. Every school will need a marketing department. Every school will need a student services kind. Of, so this will become, so my school will become huge, big. So what happens here, the people who are doing the marketing, doing the human resources, doing maybe the student services, are under one central manager who reports to our vice chancellor, but these people will support me, if this is the School of Engineering, will support me in a matrix kind of way. We work very closely and our aim is the same, but I don't approve their leaves, I don't approve their budget, it's, it comes from a central budget. So at times, we actually do a combination of both. Any other question about that? Thank you very much for starting the discussion. I really appreciate it. So this is our school. So this is professional discipline focus. So you could see that we have chemical engineering, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering. So these are three programs. Under each program director, you have the lecturers. And these all, they report to the dean for student affairs, and the dean reports to me. So this is, for when it comes to accreditation, for example, we know that this program director takes care of everything in terms of quality uh, in his uh, program or her program. Okay, so this is, this is how a subunit could be using the hierarchy within a university that's actually using a matrix kind of, of, uh, of reporting. So it's, it's in a way a hybrid uh, situation. We may have a product range focus. So, so for example, you have a technical director. This is maybe an electronic um, industry. You have the chipset division, the microprocessor division, the microcontroller division, and then these people, they have their design engineers and they have testing engineers. So you could, you, you could tell that this company has this line of product or services and they are aligned based on that. This is a way of aligning your business. Now, this is extremely important to make sure that it works for you. It works for your, your, your business. So this is based on the, the product range. Sometimes it's a project focus kind of um, organization chart. So maybe you have a software development project. You have a research project. You have another product development. You are, so, so these, are, these are, could be different projects that let's say I'm running. And let's say now in our entrepreneurship, you wanna make a car, the other team wants to make uh, an educational uh, service. There's a team who wants to make uh, a restaurant. And for me, I, I'm, my responsibility is to ensure that you guys are all successful. I align the resources towards you and things like that. So I will be here and you will be in different, although at the same level, but doing totally different things. So this is based on the, the project. Now just to help you when you think of your um, team, because I'm, what I'm alluding for really is by this Friday, the tutorial will be to build your team. And that will be the real team. So I want you to have finalized your project and you picked the people from the online community. For those who will be able, because I've seen, I think it's Lim, right? Your team, you are trying to have during the tutorial, the online participant to be with us. So those who will be able to organize the meeting on Friday, 
I'll give them full mark for this component, which is forming of the team. So those who will be able to engage somehow the online member, so you will be in a corner here, and through Skype, FaceTime, I leave it to you. I want to see and hopefully talk to the online team member. You will get full time, full mark for this aspect of the um, the uh, entrepreneurship um, uh, course. And I will use this as a very positive sign and will affect me very positively when I assess your future components, including the portfolio. And so this will impact your coursework very positively in a big way. Now, I know that there are people are living on different time zones. It's really now up to you how to convince them to take not to sleep or to take time off work to just come and speak to us for two minutes or three minutes. I want the presence live to be here. Okay? Now, <clears throat> if you recall, we, um, when we talked about the, um, the, the uh, functions, we said we had a driver, a manager, a mechanic. So for you, just to help you, these are the major basic functions in a company or a team. You need human resources, you need accounting and finance, you need production if you are making something, sales and marketing, I think everyone will need that, strategic management, what do you plan to do next, operation management, the research and development, if there is some research component, the customer service, the supply chain, if you are bringing components from different parts of the world, um, procurement or purchasing, uh, the legal aspects. So if you are working with, um, um, sorry? So you are, actually the, the legal is beyond you working in a law firm. If you recall, uh, in the beginning of this uh, MOOC, we asked you to sign that you are accepting to appear here because we, we want, so this is just like a, a, a simple aspect that we wanted to, to cover our legal ab obligations. But let's say you are using an online service, and in the online service you are utilizing um, a certain images or, or, or anything, and then suddenly you realize that you are infringing on other people's uh, property, and this could have a very damaging impact on your, uh, on your operation. So it goes beyond if you work in an illegal firm, but there is a legal aspect of almost anything that we are doing. And that's why even when you download an app or uh, you update your, uh, your uh, software or your phone, you have to agree to the terms and conditions. So these are very long and no one reads them, but it's a legal requirement so that later on, if you download this and something happened to you or something happened to your phone, you won't go and sue the company. And sometimes, you know, you could use a free product and still you have to agree for the, uh, you have to accept the agreement in which they say, we will use your data, we will do all those kind of things because without this, you may be in a, in a, in a legal um, situation. Uh, the IT, and so depending, depending on the nature of the business and depending on the size of the business, some of these you may need, some of these you may not. So I'll just recap, for your project, in order to deliver the value proposition, because I hope by now you guys have developed the value proposition for your, product, for, for your project. What core competencies do you need? So if your project is the cultural restaurant, what is the core competency that you need. You need to think about that. You need to write it down. So, so Dell says, for example, you can customize and it's cheaper because it comes directly from the manufacturer. For, for Apple, never, they never say our product is cheap. They never talk about price because this is not their marketing strategy at all. They will say it's attractive and 
it's easy to use. Now, whether it's easy or not is a totally different story, but that's the core competency that at least they claim, and I think majority of their users agree with. So for your specific business, what is the core competency? This is sometimes very similar to the value proposition. Sometimes it is um, the other side of the coin of the value proposition. The main thing that I would like you to remember when you develop the core competency is it has to be useful to the customer. And, and that's key. It has to be difficult to imitate. So if it's just so easy to imitate, then it's not a core competency. It's a competency, but it's not a core competency. And the third thing is it has to be deployable throughout your operation. So you cannot, see, you cannot say my core competency is in division A, we are fast. In division B, we are, uh, we are reliable. In the division C, we are, this is not really a core competency anymore. So it has to be something that goes throughout your business, throughout your company. So it's directly linked to the value proposition. So, so the question is, what core competency do you need? And what business functions will you need in, in, in your project? So do you need, because you, I've shown you the slide earlier, this is the business function, right? So do you really need a human resource director now? Maybe you don't. So if you don't, then you don't, you don't, you don't have to have that. Do you need an, an account and finance? Maybe you don't. But do you need someone to design your website? Maybe you do, maybe you don't, I don't know. So you will need to really pick the business functions that are relevant to your project and help you um, uh, deliver the value proposition through the core competency that you are building. So you need to know the business functions. And are you able to deliver all of these business functions? So if you can show me that you don't need an online person, you can do the entire range, then we talk. But you know, I want you to have an online partner, so I will make it very difficult for you to convince me that you don't need someone from, that it's very difficult to convince me that you will design the car, you will make the car, you will have the website for the car, you will have the, it's, it's, the marketing part for the car is gonna be extremely difficult. So I'll put all sorts of obstacles to force you to have, to recruit. And the reason is because we know we need to build teams. And we know that there is a resource out there, and I want you to learn how to use it. So if you decide eventually that you are not a web designer, you will need someone to design the web for you. Or you are not a machinist, you need someone to machine this part for you. Or you are not a finance person, because you see later we'll be talking about the business plan. And in the business plan there is a, a, a huge, a considerable part that talks about finances and projections for sales and profits and re return on investment and things like that. So if you think that if someone in Europe or Mexico or, or America who is working, who is doing this kind of job already, who can help you deliver the best business plan, then I want you to say, I'm unable to deliver this and there is a gap in the business function. So you don't have it. Among you, if you guys are the founders, there is a gap. So my question is, how will you fill the gap? So what I would like you to do is, for Friday, you come here with your value proposition clearly identified. Your core co competencies to deliver the value proposition are clearly identified. And by identified, I want them to be written. I won't accept, I have it all here. No, I want it to be written. And I want you to develop 
an organization chart. So let me write that so that we keep it. So the value So the value proposition, the core competencies, the organization chart. Now in the org chart, even if you are, for whatever reason, unable to fill certain positions, I would like you to say, for example, I have the team leader, and I need IT person, I need uh, marketing, and I need, let's say, finance. So IT could be Asad. Marketing could be Muhammad. And this one, to be appointed. OK? Now, how will you appoint the finance person? So now you have. Remember the table that I showed you earlier? So you have a function. So the function, let's say, is finance. So what kind of knowledge you want? What kind of skills do you want? Any specific attitudes? And any other attributes? So for example, you want this person to be aware of, of let's say, Malaysian taxing system. Example. So if this is something extremely important, you really want someone who knows the ins and outs of the Malaysian taxing system, for example. And maybe the skills, they are able to, to produce the profit and loss document for your business. So p &L, able to produce the profit and loss document for, for a business. Any other attributes? Maybe good communication skills. You know, sometimes you may want, you may, the skills may be speaks Chinese. Because this is something you want. Because this guy is going to be deployed in China for whatever reason. Um, any other attributes? Maybe uh, ACCA certified. This is that's an example. So if you think about this, what you have done is you've created the job requirements for a job ad. So instead of just saying, we're looking for a good accountant, you'll say, I'm looking for an accountant who is aware or has the knowledge of the Malaysian taxation system, fluent in Mandarin, reading and writing, and certified as ACCA. Then straight away, you know that you, there is that pool. These people are paid that much, and you know how to try to, to get them. Rather than just say, I want a good engineer or a good accountant. This is not good enough. OK, so uh, I think the. Can we, can, can we get this clearly on the camera? So this will become maybe the last thing I share with you today. Unless you have any question, I'll be more than happy to, to, to speak to you. OK, so if you have no question, I thank you very much. And see you on Friday. Thanks a lot.